Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And it is time for a sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, see what month we're going to rewind to today, and see the cards I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I like to stop by and share a look at an older sheet load of cards with you for a sheet load rewind. Sometimes I leave the sketches and the cards as is, and other times I switch it up a little bit. Today we're going to do a little bit of tweaking and make a set of clear cards. If you enjoy these rewinds, make sure to check out my playlist, which is linked in that description box below. Why don't we go ahead and find out what month we're rewinding to today. Today we're going to be rewinding it back to April 2020. Now, if you follow the original sketch and supply list and cutting guides, you're going to yield six cards with three pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper. What I'm going to do today to make it a little bit different is instead of using a cardstock card base, I'm going to be using a clear card base and some of the elements will go inside the card and others will go on the front. It's a great way to add dimension without adding extra layers. If you haven't yet downloaded the April 2020 sheet load of cards, I will tell you how you can do that at the end of the video. As always, it is free to all subscribers of my channel. Now let's take a look at the main supplies I'll be using today. I decided that I wanted to go for a summary feel to my cards, so I chose three pieces from Simple Stories Summer Love and Line. For my more colorful or pattern paper, I chose this one with the watermelon and oranges. And then I chose a couple other more subtle patterns that have the same colors from that first piece in them. So I have kind of orange, white, red, and pink polka dots, and then a fun red kind of gingham or plaid. For my sentiments today, you might recognize this if you are a channel member. This was a bonus printable with last month's rewind. Last month, I used these words and I print and cut them out on my silhouette so they were shaped to the word, but I knew not all of you had that capability, so I did also provide a PDF printable that had, I think, probably five pages with different sentiments on each one. So if you are a channel member, this is still linked on that monthly channel member blog, which will be linked on the membership tab here on YouTube. Now instead of cutting these out shape to the high, I brought in this two inch circle punch and I'll just be punching these out. Almost forgot a piece of cardstock. That original supply list called for two pieces for matting. I got out a red and a white and I almost forgot as well. For my card bases, I will be using clear cardstock. These are 10 mil report covers, and I do have a whole Q&A video about my what I make into my clear cards. I will have that video listed below if you want to check it out. And if you want to get access to this cardstock, it's actually, like I said, report covers. I do have some links in the description box to similar products on Amazon. As I start the process, I will tell you about other tools and products I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before we get to the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say thank you and welcome to my newest paper trimmer level member, Christine H. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you as well to all of my channel members who keep me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all subscribers. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. 
Just like most of my sheet load process videos, I'm going to start by cutting my pattern papers per the instructions on the cutting guide. Now mine does have the branding strip at the bottom, so I will need to slice that off before I get started. You will want to make sure if your paper has a direction, you keep that in mind before you make your first cut. I'm going to make three columns, one at four and a quarter inches wide and two at three inches wide. Then for each of those, they'll get rotated and cut to their final height. Now the widest one, the four and a quarter inch, because it's going to go on the inside of the card base, I cut it just slightly under five and a half inches tall. That way later when I put it on the inside, it's not going to interfere with the fold. For those final two strips that are three inches wide, I cut them each into two pieces that were four inches tall. Now you'll see here that I do have quite a few leftover scraps, but make sure to keep watching because I'm going to show you how I ended up with seven extra cards using today's scraps. I cut the remaining two pieces of pattern paper exactly like that first one, and here's a look at all of those pieces cut. Next, I brought in my two pieces of cardstock for matting, and I'm going to cut each of these into six pieces that are three and a quarter inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. To do this, I sliced each piece in half to four and a quarter by 11, and then I rotated them and cut pieces that were three and a quarter inches wide. I just kept cutting until all of those were done. And finally for the cutting, we need to make our card bases. I will be cutting three sheets of clear cardstock for a top fold card. To do that, I got out my report covers and I cut them again in half to four and a quarter by 11 inches. Once all of those were cut, I used that little ledge at the bottom of my cutter to help me line up the cardstock for folding. Now you could use a bone folder to reinforce that, but I just use my fingers. And as long as it is a nice crisp fold, these cards will stand on their own. Now that all of the main pieces are cut, I'm going to put together my card kits or the pieces of pattern paper that will go on each card front. I need one of the large ones and two of the small ones for each card. I start by grabbing the gingham, move on to the watermelon for the background 3x4, and then the orange one for the foreground 3x4. Now for the next one, I grab the same gingham, but I'm going to skip over to the orange for the background and use the watermelon for the foreground. You'll see here that the backgrounds are the same, but the fronts will look a little different. I am going to show you the rest of the process of grabbing the paper for the card kits in case you want a little help as you go. Once those were all done, I brought in my red cardstock mats and I am going to mat the background pattern paper on these pieces. I just think later when I put the cards together, this is going to help to remind me which one will be the background. Now later on, we will use the white mats, but they won't actually be matting the foreground pattern paper. So we're not going to adhere those two pieces together right now. You'll see here, I'm just going to add the mat and then I set those aside and moved on to the next card. Just like previously, I kind of rotate them so I can easily tell each card kit apart. Now it's time to get these pieces put onto their clear card base. I'm going to add the largest or piece A to the inside back of the card base. And like I mentioned earlier, it is just slightly shorter than five and a half inches. Now I do find when I use clear card bases, it's best to bring in a scrap of paper or something to help me see the edges. And once I line that up carefully and then press it down, you'll see that the pattern paper won't interfere with the card closure. If you would cut it at five and a half inches tall, the card might not want to shut completely. Next, I'm going to adhere the background pattern paper or the one with the red mat flat down onto the gingham paper. Now this might be a good point to bring in the printable so you can kind of see the angle and the spacing, but each one will be tilted the opposite way from the previous. 
I get that set in place and now I'm going to bring in the white mats and this will end up being what I put my personal message on later and it will be covered by the foreground pattern paper which you'll see here in just a second gets adhered to the card front. Once that white cardstock is in place, I'm going to close my card front and then add adhesive to my orange piece. Once that has adhesive, I carefully center it where the white is a nice even mat around it and then press it into place. I continued putting the rest of the card together just like that first one. Now we're going to get those sentiments ready. Because of how the PDF file is laid out, I won't be able to punch one right on top of the other. I'm going to have to skip one. So I went through with that circle punch and punched out six of the highs. After I was done with those, I noticed that some of those leftover strips were about that same size. So I'm going to be punching circles for each of the card fronts and I'm going to match it up to the pattern paper that is in the background or that smaller 3x4 that you just see the corners. I thought this would help use up some of those scraps and help pull in that background pattern paper as well. Once I had those pattern paper circles punched, I adhered one to the back of each of the high word and then got those placed onto the card fronts. That is where I stopped for these cards. You know, usually I might add some bling, but I thought I would leave these nice and flat for mailing. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. Like I mentioned earlier, I did try to use up most of the scraps to make more cards. I did previously have some long skinny strips, some more of the 3x4s, and then these little pieces over on the right. Here is a look at the first bonus card I made. I used a technique that we did during Virtual Stamp Joy this spring with Tailored Expressions, and I used a die that cut the strips of pattern paper into smaller strips. For the remaining scraps, I had a lot of the 3x4s, so I figured out different ways to cut those up and decorate the front of clear cards. For this first one, I cut a couple skinny strips off the left and left the right side at the width that it was. I think I might have to turn this one into a sheet load eventually. For the sentiment, I used the highs that were between the ones I punched out. I left the edges rounded and just cut the top and bottom to as much of an even border as I could. For the second set, I did the cutting down again, but this time I cut a strip off the bottom and cut the remaining part at the top in smaller sections. Again, using the highs that were in between my previously punched ones. I hope you enjoyed this rewind to April 2020, seeing how I made clear cards out of the original and then made some bonus cards with the leftovers. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the printable for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. If you haven't yet downloaded the April 2020 sheet load of cards and you would like to make some for yourself, as always, I do ask that you're a subscriber to my channel. It's free, it's quick, it's easy. You just click on that button right below this video. You're going to find the link for the April 2020 sheet load of cards down in the description box right below my P.O. box address. Below the link, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is your password. You can download it and view it on screen, or you can print it out to have in front of you while you craft like I have. That is totally up to you. Don't forget if you do share any cards using the April 2020 sheet load online, I have a couple hashtags here, and you can also send one in for the end of the month video. I will have the Show Us Your Sheet Load Guidelines video linked in the description box as well. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.